Hi guys, today we'll be talking about calculating the compass error using the azimuth method. Uh, in the example here, uh, we have uh, got a date uh, that on the ship it's the 5th of October 2004 uh, at approximately 8.31 zone time. Uh, this is also same as ship's time. So zone time can also be called the ship's time. And uh, the position or the DR position or the position is 49 degrees 32 minutes north, 149 degrees 33 minutes east. The compass bearing of the sun, the compass bearing of the sun was 130.5 degrees compass. Uh, we have the chronometer time as 10 hours 33 minutes and 14 seconds, which was uh, 2 minutes 13 seconds fast on GMT. We have to find the deviation of the compass if the variation is given as 8 degrees west. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is basically find out the GMT time from the chronometer time which is given to us. For that we have a hint that it is 8.31 uh, on the ship uh, and GMT is 10 hours ahead of the uh, ship's time. Alright, so uh, we have the chronometer time as 10.33.14. So if you see the solution here, um, the time is written as 10.33.14 but if we think about it from a chronometer perspective, it's like an analog uh, watch on our hands. 10.33.14 can also mean it's 22.33.14. So we have to figure out uh, what the chronometer time is based on the hint given to us in the question. Alright, so we've got the chronometer time and let's put it as 10.33.14 first. So let's take this example here and figure out whether this is the right chronometer time and GMT time or not. The error is 2 minutes 13 seconds fast. So we'll subtract the error because it is fast on the clock. Uh, so we subtract it. The GMT time which comes out is 10.31.01. Now the ship is 10 hours ahead of the GMT. So that means uh, on the ship, it is 20.31.01. So if the chronometer time is considered as 10 hours, 33 minutes and 14 seconds. So because the zone time is given to us as 0 at 31 and not 20.31, uh, this cannot be the correct time that we calculate. So 10.33.14 on the chronometer could also mean 22.33.14. And if we do the same thing what we did before, we subtract the error uh, and uh, the time GMT time that we get is 22.31.01. And then because the ship is 10 hours ahead uh, of the GMT, uh, since it's on the east longitude, we add 10 hours to it and what we get is it's 8.31.01 here as the ship's time. And we know that it is the 5th of October um, on the ship and it is 8.31 and this is what is given to us in the question as well. So this hint matches this hint here. So we use this as a hint and we, we see that this matches here. So if this is 5th October 831 on the ship and because the ship is 10 hours ahead of the GMT, we know that uh, at the GMT, the day must still be 4th of October. It's still not 5th of October on the GMT longitude. So this becomes our GMT, the one that we use for the rest of the calculations, right? And that is the time I have here is 4th of October 223101. So don't take the zone time for the rest of the calculations, use the GMT time for the rest of the calculations. All right, so see how we figure it out. So 103314 could have meant 103314 in the morning or 223314 at night because it's a chronometer. You cannot see what time it is exactly. It doesn't give you the time in the 24 hour notation. Then you subtract the error in both the cases. In both the cases, you get a couple of GMT times. Then you apply the zone correction to it. The zone is given to us here as GMT plus 10 hours because we are in the east longitude. And then we get two zone times and looking at both the zone times you have to see what matches the hint which is given to us in the question. The hint given to us in the question was that it's 5th of October on the ship and it is approximately 831 there. So that's what should be our zone time here as well and that's why we've cancelled the first case and we've taken the second case but it's 5th October 831 zone time but because we are 10 hours ahead of GMT, the GMT's time should be on the 4th of October 2231. That means that on the GMT longitude or at 000 degrees, the date is still 5th of 4th of October and the time is still 2231 at night. Right? So taking that GMT time ahead, we will solve the rest of the equation. 
rest of the question all right so using this time for the celestial body sun we calculate our gha so the gha we can get from the nautical almanac so let's go to the nautical almanac for 4th of october at 2200 hours so 4th of october is here at 2200 hours is uh, somewhere here as you can see that it's somewhere here right and if you go down this here to the sun's column so you will see that it's uh, the GA, GHA is 15253 is the GHA here and the declination is 4 degrees 44.8 minutes uh, rising on the hour right so you can note down a few things so you know 152.53 is the GHA here and uh, 44 4 degrees 44.8 minutes south is the declination if you go down further uh, then you know that uh, you can also get the d value so the d value here uh, is let's see what is the d value here again not doing a good job here am i so i'll delete this here so the d value here I should probably get rid of this bloody thing. So the D value here at the bottom, you can see it's given as one. So D value is given as one, All right? So again, I repeat myself, the GHA is 152.53. The declination is four degrees 44.8 south and it's increasing to the next hour. So we take the D value as one. So we go back to our notes here and we see what we can do with that. So we have 152.53 as the GHA, we have 4 degrees 44.8 south as the declination, we've also got the D value as 1. Uh, then we get the have to get the increment, so for increment we have to go into the 31 minute column, 31 and 1 second, because that's the rest of the time, so we have to see what is the GHA, 422 hours, 31 minutes and 0, 1 seconds, and for that we have to apply a correction here which is called increment correction because the GHA we've got previously is for the 2200 hours so we also have to apply a correction for 31 minutes and one second for that we have to go into the increments table from where we can also get the D correction value uh, for one uh, right so we'll go back into the increments table now and uh, this is the increments table and for 31 minutes and one second you can see that uh, if I can get my marker thing out so for 31 minute and one second for sun you have is 7 degrees 45.3 and the D value or the D correction value is 0 0.5 here you can see that here right if I can show you where the arrow so for 31 minute and one second is 745.3 and the D correction value for one is 0 0.5 right so we go back to that and we have is 745.3 as the increment value we have 0 0.5 as the d correction value you will add to it because declination was increasing remember so declination was increasing from 2200 to 2300 so you add the two and this is your final declination 4 degrees 45.3 minutes south then you add your gha uh, your increment to your original gha you get your corrected gha now increments are always added the word itself means increment means increasing then because your longitude is east gha is least that's the rule of thumb so if you're on the east longitude your lha is greater than your gha your gh is less so the rule of thumb is uh, longitude east and that's what we say and gha is least that means your gha will be less than lha if your longitude was west your gha would be the best because it would be more than your LHA. So when it's east longitude, you add the east longitude to the GHA and you get your LHA here. You've also got your latitude here. So these are all the values you need. You need your latitude, declination and LHA and that should be enough for you to solve the rest of the question uh, for the compass error, right? So then we find out something called A value. A value is the correction value that we find out by dividing tan of lat by tan of LHA. So if you divide tan of the latitude, which is tan 49 degrees 32 minutes, and you divide it by tan of the LHA, which is 310 degrees 11.3 minutes, 
you should be getting something like this. You keep it to two decimal places. Uh, I named this south. You name it south is because you name it always opposite to the latitude. You name it opposite to the latitude unless unless your LHA lies between 90 and 270 which is not the case here right so LHA is 310 it doesn't lie between 90 and 270 and that's why you name it opposite to the latitude your B is found by dividing tan declination by sine of LHA so if I'm dividing tan of declination which is 4 degrees and 45.3 minutes and dividing by LHA which is tan sorry sine of LHA not tan of LHA so we divided by sine of LHA which is 310 degrees and 11.3 minutes you should be getting 0 0.11 just keep it to two decimal places again this time I named it south again why because this takes the name of the declination so this takes the name of the declination declination is south so your B is south now when you have your A and B values the rule is for calculating C is same names you add them and different names you subtract them so in this case both of them are south your A and B is south so you will add the two and you get your C and of course it takes the name of the larger in this case both of them were south so that's why your C is also south your C is also south right so you got your C value then you can move on straight to calculating your azimuth so your formula is tan of azimuth equals 1 by C times cos of lat so remember uh, one mistake that people do is they often cal calculate 1 by C and then multiply it by cos of lat uh, that is wrong mathematically so you must first find out C times cos of lat and then uh, you must divide uh, 1 by that value all right this is what I have done here so you see tan of azimuth equals 1 divided by 1 1.10 which is C and then multiplied by cos of the latitude I found out the denominator first and then um, I took the tan on the other side um, and you can see it becomes tan inverse here and then the azimuth that you get is 54.5 right 54.5 now how do I get south and east from well south and east because is, uh, it takes the name of C takes the name of C you can see C was south so I named it south and it also takes the name of the LHA this takes the name of the LHA uh, so how is that because if LHA is 0 to 180 it is named west and if it is more than 180 to 360 then it is named east so it takes the name of LHA so because here the LHA was 310 which is more than 180 it has been named east right so south comes from C and east comes from LHA and what I get is south 54.5 east and what does that mean that means it's 125.5 how is that because uh, if you can visualize uh, how the north south quadrant work here so this is north and this is south this is 180 uh, and this is east which is 090 so if i go 54.5 east here 54.5 east here uh, then uh, the true bearing is 125.5 because 180 minus 54.5 is 125.5 right so that's how I get my true bearing from so true bearing becomes 125.5 degrees true your compass bearing given to you in the question was 130.5 in this case compass is more so you can see the true here is 125.5 in the circular diagram here the compass is 130.5 so it means it's lying on the west of lying on the west of true by 5 degrees so your compass error becomes west so compass best error west compass is more error is west then the variation to you given to you in the question is 8 degrees west uh, your compass error is a combination of your variation and deviation if your variation is already more than compass error and it's 8 degrees west uh, naturally uh, your deviation will be 3 degrees east because you will kind of subtract it and then they get the compass error uh, conceptually if you look at the diagram as well if your variation is west that means your magnetic lies on the west of true this angle here is your variation this is 8 degrees west this small one here is your 5 degrees west is your compass error and uh, that's why your deviation 
is seen as where your compass is lying from the magnetic it is lying to the east of the magnetic and it's uh, by three degrees here east that's how it works all right so if you think that i went a bit fast in my video just pause uh, where you think uh, that you didn't understand it watch it a couple of times it's a small question it's a short question rather and uh, just pause it watch it multiple times uh, stop where you can't understand it and uh, hopefully you'll get a good understanding of uh, the question here on how to calculate the compass error using the azimuth method uh, especially if you have been given a chronometer time and from which you have to derive the gmt time all right 